Good morning and welcome to the Take Your Life Back Today Show. My name is Raul Predix. I'm an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and the host of this show, the Take Your Life Back Today Show. Folks, I hope you're having a great Saturday early, Saturday morning. Today is uh, November 11, 2017. And I, I want to talk about slowing down in life today because, um, you know, we all seem to be on a fast pace through life. And let's talk about how to slow down your life and how to do it. The world is moving at a break. Uh, next speed. Information is flowing 24 hours a day, no matter which way you look, at work, at school. We are busy, busy, and more busier. Lunch is woofed down each and every day. We don't even enjoy eating anymore. When we get home, there's so much to do. Uh, when we finally do finish what we have to do, we are just falling into our bed. You can lose or maintain weight. It takes about 20 minutes for your brain to register that you are full. That's because the food has to reach the intense uh, before your body, uh, intestines before your body starts to send signals telling your brain that you feel full. So number one is, is you can lose or maintain weight. By slowing down your eating, your brain can stop you before you eat too much. How to slow down. Eat before you get ridiculously hungry. If you're really hungry, it will be hard to eat slow. The best way to avoid this is not to wait for too long to eat. I mean, once you start feeling starved, it's too late. Uh, put down your fork between bites. Don't hold your fork constantly because you're just going to keep shoveling. And then the classic advice is to put down your fork and then chew thoroughly. Then to pick up your fork again after you've swallowed, take another bite and repeat the process. Focus on the food and yourself, not on what other people are doing. Or uh, It's easy to get drawn into someone else's pace while eating, but just go at your own pace. Um, Number two is you can lower your stress levels when you slow down in life. When you feel like life has gone too fast and you feel like you are losing control over it, barely hanging on, it is time to uh, bring down your stress level somehow. This is as you also probably have noticed can cause a lot of unnecessary stress when you're running around like a nut <laughs> pretty much. I don't mean to put it that way, but how to slow down. Simply, simply do the things you are doing slower. If you are moving quickly, then just take a deep breath and slow down your movement and pace yourself when you're walking. Drive your car and ride your bike a little slower each and every day. As mentioned above, eat slower, take a life around you a bit instead of focusing it, and control your speed. Number three, you can gain clarity and find and do what it is the most important thing for you to do. As everything moves a bit too fast, it is easy to get lost. If you don't think about what you're doing, then you can easily get into the rut of everyone else's pace. You mind, uh, <clears throat> you mind just would think, well, let's just hurry, hurry, hurry. That's what your mind is thinking. But what is next is what you're going to get, which is lots of stru uh, stress. So you want to slow down. How do you slow down, you might ask? Well, when I get lost in such uh, frantic and stressful activity, I take a deep breath. I just take on my surroundings for a minute or two and then relax and reconnect with the present moment. Number four is you can get new ideas and let creativity flow again in your life. If your mind is constantly bombarded with new information, voices and sounds, then it will be very hard to uh, find a room for creativity and for getting new ideas. So you might want to look for that one place that you call sanctuary. Right now it's the garage in between the heater kicking on. That's why I'm trying to do this quickly because I don't want you to have to listen to the heater. But this is a quiet room except for the heater, but as far as human contact. Influences are good for creativity, but an overload and input just makes you feel like your mind is overstuffed and like you are just trying to keep up with it all. So you may need to slow down and free up some space in the mind. How to slow down again. <clears throat> take, a deep, uh, take a deep breath, take a walk, sit down in nature, watch the ocean, or take a shower, or take, uh, or take a while to just lie down on your bed and so forth. And sometimes it's even good to just read a book, my friends. Just be there without much thought about what you are going to do and who is going to bother you around you. And last but not least is number five. You cannot connect with the present moment and just fully enjoy what is happening right now. When you are aligned with the present moment, you tend to feel good. You tend to feel good and relaxed. Isn't that true, my friends? 
Well, your mood is optimistic, your mind is positive, uh, you do your work on a focused manner, and the social part of your life uh, tends to go smoother and become more fun. You do things, my friends, without having to think much of what you're doing. So sometimes when you get off that track, you need to figure out how to slow that down. I usually just slow down what I'm doing and go to a full stop or come to a full stop, I should say. Then I take in my surroundings fully and say are happening right now for the minute or two. I listen to cars going past the house. I look out the window and I watch the children play. I watch my desktop and the glass of water sitting next to me. We need to all slow down in life. Life is going past us rapidly. I mean, look, you, you folks that are out there in my age group, your children have children. And some of those children who have children have are, are getting to the age within the next four or five years where they can have children. So what does that say? Your life is going back past you very rapidly. I always say slow down in life. You know, um, simply put, turn to God and let God guide and direct you because God has guided and direct me with energy I've never had before. I mean, think about it. I, to, to be able to do what I do, to do the show and get all the material, to do a job as an optician, to, to be in the middle of writing a book, to help my wife open up a business, that's a lot each and every day, folks. But somehow, through the grace of God, for Him guiding and directing me, I'm able to do all that and still get a good amount of sleep. I pretty much go to bed by 8 o'clock and I'm up by 4. That's pretty much how I work. You know, my mother, God rest her soul, used to say to me, the sleep before 12 o'clock is the most important sleep for you. It's the, the best, the healthiest sleep for you. So for you folks that are out there running around ragged and you're staying up until 11, 12 o'clock at night to be up at 6 again, that sleep is not really that good for you. You're kind of just running around in circles. You need to slow down your life. We need to get away from that 24-hour news channel that we so, des not desperately, that we so willingly want to watch each and every day. We need to stop putting down the newspapers. I have found that the less I look at the news, the happier I am. Now, that's not to say I'm isolating myself from society, but what it is saying is I need to slow my mind down as much as my body. And the mind will never slow down as long as you try to keep up with everything that's going on uh, within our country and within the world. It is important to keep up on, uh, on, on, on happenings, but you don't have to be addicted to the newspaper. You don't have to be addicted to, the, to uh, the news. What you should be addicted to is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has deemed you a miracle. He has deemed you a masterpiece, and he is waiting for you to come around to show him and to thank him for him giving his only begotten son so that you can have everlasting life. Folks, reach up to God each and every day and say, God, I need guidance and direction. I thank you for everything I do have. And folks, thank God for everything you have, even if it's just a little bit, because it's better than nothing. And for you folks that are out there that only want to get more and more and more, when you want everything, you get nothing at the end. The glass is half full. It's not half empty, folks. So start today being more thankful, start today slowing down, start today realizing that without God in your life, life is not the same. God will guide and direct you the minute you start talking to God and saying, I need you to guide and direct me. Turn your life to Jesus. Call me at 844-405-HELP. Together, you and I, we can help each other take our lives back, but we need to also not only talk to each other, but we need to talk to God each and every day. Remember, today is a brand new day, Saturday, November 11th. Start today praising God. Start today utilizing Nemail. Nemail is what I call is when you put your slippers at the edge of your bed at night. Don't do that anymore, but put them under your bed at night. And that way, in the morning, when you have to go get those slippers to get out of bed, You'll be forced to go on your knees to look under the bed and there the slippers are. And while you're on your knees, it's the best time to start talking to God. Knee mail. It's not an email. It's not regular mail. It's not a telephone. It's on your knees talking to the Lord Jesus Christ each and every morning. And after you speak to him, get up from up your knees, dust your knees, and thank God for another 86,400 seconds. He has blessed you today. Take a few of those seconds to thank him each and every day. Utilize knee mail every single morning. And may God bless you this Saturday, November 11th, 2017.
Take care.